Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. <clears throat> Let's take a question from this side. Good evening, Dr. Zacharias and Dr. Nabil. It's a great honor to have you here tonight with us. Uh, for about six or seven years now, me and my friends have been going out evangelizing on the streets. And uh, I'm sorry to change the gears here, but I'm in desperate need of your help tonight. Um, we encounter a lot of groups on the streets, uh, different uh, uh, religious groups, uh, Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, things like that. And um, one group we have a particular problem with sometimes in, in answering is uh, Roman Catholicism. And so I went, I went back to research uh, Dr. I mean, uh, not Dr., but Martin Luther and uh, Charles Spurgeon and, and, and things like that, and they would call it a heresy. But when I fast forward to now, and, and I go and read uh, The Kingdom of the Cults uh, by Walter Martin, uh, there, it's not in there. So my, my question to you is, uh, is Roman Catholicism another example of how unity does not equal uniformity within the Christian community, or is it a derivative, or is it at its core a derivative from true Christianity? N Nabil did say it's he's like a saying, Baptist, do you, it's just so. like saying, do you want to be axed or do you want to be hanged? You know. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate the question that you're raising. You know, it's interesting that uh, when you grow up in a land of India where there are 330 million deities, uh, you get a lot of questions like this as well. So let me just be first. Let me issue a disclaimer here briefly, we as Christian apologists basically defend the biblical worldview as we understand it, see it, and find it represented. We know there are many people who may have some doctrinal diversities and doctrinal differences to, uh, from us, and we understand that. So you've obviously heard me address this in some way because you use the very words I've sometimes used, unity does not have to be uniformity, so something like that. Uh, let me put it to you in these words without getting specific in the answer and then issuing one or two comments after that. Number one, it is this. It doesn't really matter what label one puts on an empty bottle if the bottle is empty or if the bottle is mislabeled, then it is even very dangerous. The Bible reminds us who is a Christian. It is one who really confesses in his mouth and believes in his heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and that Christ has raised him from the dead and so on. When you get into this theological realm, there are many other additions that come in. So if you ask me, what does it take to be a follower of Jesus Christ? My answer may be very brief. If you say to me, what does it take to belong to a particular denomination? We may make it longer because the denomination may add its distinctives to find uniformity in that group. Then you may say, what does it take to teach in a theological institution? Now you have to be even more protracted in your answer because as an instructor, you have to be theologically very correct, crossing your T's and dotting your I's. I know many people, whether they are in Protestantism or in Roman Catholicism, who are truly followers of Jesus Christ. There are many other aspects of their faith that they may not fully subscribe to. That is an accretion across history that was added by the power of leadership or by the power of group or sectarianism. The fascinating thing is prior to the Reformation, we were all sort of divided into Eastern and Western at that point, and there were distinctives and hierarchy, and then doctrinal distinctives emerged just as well. So my answer to you is, what is a cult? Let me define it for you in the simplest possible way. A cult is generally, I think, Walter, I actually, as you probably know, went on and became the general editor of Walter Martin's book. So in the last seven or eight years, that book uh, really, uh, the family asked me to bring the editing into it. But I define a cult this way. Anything that deviates from the historic person and work of Jesus Christ or adds to his teaching and is generally at the instruction of one individual who dictates that belief, it is almost certainly cultic at that time. 
oftentimes groups can function as a, a hierarchy within themselves and an individual heteronomically dictating the laws. If that happens, then any one of us, whether in Protestantism or in Catholicism, can end up becoming cultic by following just one particular brand of teaching and deviating from the historic person and work of Jesus Christ. My answer to you is very simple. You follow Christ as best you know how, as revealed in the Word of God, and serve Him and love Him and honor Him with your life and your heart and in your walk. And that's what you preach to others as well. God will be the ultimate judge of what groups went wrong in which direction. I have a hard enough time dictating whether my family has been right in every way, leave alone historic five, 600 years of denominations. So I'm not dodging the question, I'm just telling you it is wise to be careful and not tar everybody with the same brush in a particular group. The faith that you have in Christ is a personal one, and sometimes I know people who stay within groups in order to bring changes within that group where they see doctrinally they have deviated or gone astray from other belief systems. It is possible that a person may be a good Christian and a bad Roman Catholic. It can be easily happen that way. To draw another question from the Twitter stream, we had several